right hand president, I want to thank you sincerely for giving me the floor. Your Excellencies, members of government, you are welcome. All your members of the nation. I want to equally congratulate the Committee of Foreign Affairs for a job well done. This bill, Your Excellency, that deals with the cooperation agreement to, to, to permit the head of state ratify the cooperation agreement between the Republic of Cameroon and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia <coughs> is extremely important and the importance of this bill that deals with investment, economy, trade, education, science, culture, tourism, sports, security, <coughs> and fight against terrorism cannot be overemphasized. In fact, this bill seeks to promote and protect investment between both states and their citizens. I listened keenly to the report presented by the rapporteur and uh, a particular case struck my attention and that is the case of a Cameroonian, a prominent Cameroonian, a prominent business magnate, somebody who has made Cameroon proud in the business world. He is a business genius. Forbes has constantly recognized him not only as the richest Cameroonian, but the richest citizen in the Francophone zone, African zone. This is none other than Alaj Bawadam, who is a genius in business. In fact, the, the media lately has been awashed with what has befell him in South Africa, where almost all his investments have been seized. The long and short of it is, Alaj Bawadamulu has been refused justice in South Africa. <laughs> this is a man who 30, 35 years ago, towards the end of apartheid, saw business opportunities in South Africa and decided to dispose of some of his assets and transfer his money to invest in South Africa, to boost the economy of South Africa, to offer employment opportunities to South Africans. And this relationship went on for a very long time. He chose uh, uh, the building sector <coughs> to invest in. And this permitted him to acquire a number of high-flying buildings in South Africa. In fact, at one point, he was the loan, the most important real estate investor in South Africa. That relationship went on for a very long time, Your Excellency, without any problem. No problem at all. Several head of states from Lake Nelson Mandela to Tabo Beki and now to the present president sustained good relationship with him without any problem. In fact, he did not make money in South Africa to invest in South Africa. He brought in money into South Africa. Your Excellency, lately, what has happened to him, I heard in the report that his relationship, his problem stems from the fact that he obtained loans from a bank to purchase a building. That is a normal business relationship with any prominent businessman and banks. What he did was not unusual. You will not see any rich man in the world who has 
who doesn't take loans from banks. But the way he has been treated because of the repayment of this loan leaves us with a lot of doubt. And I begin to ask questions whether if Alajida Baba Dampolo was a South African, the bank would have treated him the way he has been treated. I begin to ask questions whether if he was a South African, the Justice Department of South Africa would have handled his case the way they handled it. Your Excellency, you don't need to be a jurist to understand that when you take a mortgage, there is always something you put as security, as collateral. And when you default payment, it is that thing that will be attached to recover that loan. But this is not the case with a large that Baba Tampulu in South Africa, a Cameroonian. He defaulted payment for reasons best known in the economic world. We all know why. But he had the possibility to redress the loans, but he was refused that opportunity. The only option South Africans went into was to seize his property. And the value of that property, <clears throat> I'm talking from a position of knowledge, he was owing 21 billion francs that he borrowed from a particular bank to buy a building. It would have just been simple to seize that building and then seize one other thing to make up the amount. But they went on a rampage to plunder his property, seize everything, which is no longer justice. And Alaji Bawad Bampul, Mr. President, is a Cameroonian. I want to use this opportunity to thank His Excellency President Paul Bia for always, always standing by his compatriots wherever they are in the world. I want to thank him for always supporting and defending his compatriots whenever they are in difficulties. He has manifested it in the case of Bawata Polu, but it is not enough. Cameroon, we Cameroonians are civilized people. The xenophobic attack on Cameroonians in South Africa is not today. It happened two years ago where Africans at all levels in South Africa were attacked, had their property were seized, some were killed, some were burnt, but since Cameroonians are civilized, they didn't do anything. They only helped those who could come back to come back. But other countries, you, I don't need to emphasize Nigeria. Nigerians could not handle it the way we handled ours. They went on the rampage in Nigeria and burn all South African interests and ask them to leave. There is a prominent supermarket called ShopRite. It's a South African business interest. You all watch in the internet how it was ransacked by Nigerians to revenge what was happening to their compatriots. But in Cameroon, we cannot do that because we cannot use force. We are civilized. So, Your Excellency, this thing has happened. We will not fold our hands and see the property of our compatriot plunder. We are calling on the government of South Africa through our own government in Cameroon to redress the situation. Let his property that has been wrongfully seized be restituted back. We are not saying the loan he took should be forfeited. You cannot be owing 21 billion and they take close to 500 billion. Is that justice? It's not justice. The principle of international relations, Your Excellency, is based on reciprocity. 
Reciprocity means what? That in international intercourse, you give to each state what he gives to you. You treat the citizen of each state the way they treat your own citizens. If the government of Cameroon has been very nice to South Africans in Cameroon, they have been very hospitable, we have been very welcoming, we expect similar treatment to our citizens in South Africa. I don't think that going to South Africa to invest was a crime. If they don't want him, what we expect is that they restitute his property and ask him to leave, Mr. President. Thank you for this time. They should ask him to leave but not seize his property because what has happened is broad day arm robbery. It's arm robbery, which cannot be accepted in the world of today. So, Your Excellency, I have listened to the report of the Foreign Affairs Committee. I still want to get further assurances from you that my government will do more, not only to protect Bawad Dampulu, but to assure other Cameroonian investors in South Africa, because he is not the only investor. There are other smaller investors. If you let this go, wait for what will happen to the other Cameroonian investors who are in South Africa. This is a test case. They have tested to see what we do. If we remain silent, be ready to welcome all the Cameroonians who have invested in South Africa back home empty-handed. So, Your Excellency, I would like to know what further measures my government is taking to redress the situation, to work what diplomatic channel is being used to cause the government of South Africa to come to reason. We all supported them when they were facing apartheid, when the white minorities were sitting on them. I remember my passport in those days had only one country on my passport that I cannot visit. And that country was South Africa because my government supported them when I say them, the black majority against oppression, it shouldn't be the reverse today that we who supported you should pay the price for your liberation. Thank you for your kind attention. Il a fait une analyse sur la situation de M. Dalbo. Et dans son argumentaire, il y a eu trois points importants que nous avons retenus. Le premier point, c'est une certaine défense de M. Dalbo comme étant un investisseur modèle de notre pays. Et à ce sujet, il a soutenu une longue évolution de M. Baba Dakoumou dans le domaine des affaires. Le deuxième point qu'il a évoqué qu dans son propos, c'est les investissements colossaux que M. Dakoumou a pu réaliser en Afrique du Sud sur la base des emprunts bancaires qu'il avait eus et qui lui ont permis de poursuivre. Le troisième point qu'il a évoqué, c'est qu'il a souligné l'injustice dont aurait été euh, sujet, ou alors dont serait sujet M. Euh, Dalton, notre compatriote. Enfin, si j'ai bien retenu, il a félicité euh, la démarche du président de la République et son excellent formula pour le la protection de nos compatriotes qui sont des investisseurs dans un certain nombre de pays pour en fait terminer sur le fait qu'il voulait savoir où en est l'évolution de cette situation pour restaurer euh, notre compatriote euh, dans l'équité 
e l'ansia da quel pochino di rucura senza attività. Missione Sinatera, je voudrais partager votre point de vue. Amplement, nous savons tout ce qui est Baba Kalkuno. Il est venu à présenter dans ce pays, que ce soit au niveau des investisseurs nationaux, locaux, que ce soit au niveau des investisseurs internationaux. Il est venu à présenter parce que c'est un Camerounais modèle jusqu'au niveau le plus élevé de nos institutions républicaines, M. Dampuno a toujours été perçu comme un Camerounais qui a le fighting spirit, non pas le chef de l'État, pour mener le combat dans le domaine qui a le sein, celui des investissements. Je voudrais donc rassurer le sénateur Chava que la situation de M. Dampuno vis-à-vis de son contentieux avec l'Afrique du Sud est très suivi par le gouvernement, par le chef de l'État. Et comme il vous a été dit dans le rapport qui nous est présenté, le président de la République a multiplié des gestes à l'initiative de l'Afrique du Sud pour permettre que ce problème soit traité en toute équité. Il a été dit que le chef de l'État a envoyé lui-même un de nos ministres donc, le ministre de l'Église, euh, avec qui je, je travaille, qui est allé là-bas pour faire un message au président Cyril Ramaphosa. Et je pense qu'à la suite de cet acte-là, les autorités sud-africaines ont pris la dimension de la préoccupation du Cameroun par rapport à ce qui s'est passé concernant M. Dabou. Deuxième élément que je voudrais vous signaler, c'est que moi-même, j'ai reçu la ministre adjointe des Affaires étrangères de la Cube du Sud, le mois dernier ici au Cameroun, pour au cours de nos discussions et de nos échanges, nous avons réitéré la position du gouvernement camerounais de voir cette question se résoudre, trouver une solution à une solution satisfaisante pour les deux. Et au moment où je vous parle, nous sommes en contact permanent avec le nouveau haut commissaire de la Fibre du Sud au Cameroun, avec lequel nous travaillons de manière très rapprochée pour faire évoluer ce dossier. Enfin, je peux vous dire que notre ambassadeur à la Fibre du Sud, le haut commissaire, a fait un travail extrêmement puissant pour permettre que les lieux soient maintenus afin que ce problème ne tombe pas au cours, mais qu'il continue à évoluer sur le plan des négociations. Il y a donc des négociations connues, c'est ça que je veux dire. Mais n'oubliez pas aussi, monsieur le sénateur, monsieur le sénateur Chapa, que nous sommes dans le monde des investissements, nous sommes dans le monde des affaires. Il y a aussi des consultations, des négociations juridiques avec les avocats. Le monsieur euh, Dalbuno, disons, a de ses avocats et le milieu euh, d'appel sur la Donc le problème est suivi dans tout, euh, son, tout son sujet, que ce soit politique, diplomatique que juridique. Voilà ce que je peux vous dire. Mais avant de clore sur le monsieur Dalbuno, je voudrais vous dire que ce n'est pas la première affaire que le monsieur Dalbuno a avec des partenaires et pour lequel l'État du Cameroun s'est beaucoup investi. Il vous souviendra, il y a quelques temps, deux ou trois ans, que notre compatriote, investisseur, avait des problèmes d'excès avec le Vietnam. Et là aussi, le Cameroun avait pris le problème avec toute la force et toute la puissance. Moi-même, je vous parle, le chef de l'État l'avait envoyé au Vietnam en, 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 en comment on dit en envoyé spécial pour aller porter toute sa préoccupation aux autorités vietnamiennes afin que ce problème entre Dan Kuno et le groupe Nelson puisse trouver une solution euh, pacifique, une solution euh, apaisée. Donc, c'est pour vous dire que nous suivons tous ces problèmes-là pour protéger 
no compartilhador, numa vez que agora já temos um diretivo em chão de militar, que não dá um lá para a cidade para cá, ou a gente pode ter que salvar lá para a área de ocupação, como a missão de missão da Alemanha. Mas lá, a gente tem um problema que eu vou escrever, foi um problema a escrever, mas é um problema que vai entrar em plano. E a contratação, em seu momento, lá, nós já resolvemos para a minha mãe. Les avocats font mon travail, les politiques travaillent, la diplomatie aussi fait son, son travail. Voilà, M. le Président, ma réponse pour cette question du sénateur Chapa. Terminé, c'est le docteur Daya, le flambeau. Euh, je voudrais d'abord relever que dans son propos militaire, nos sénateurs. Le Dr. Rayab a d'abord marqué son appréciation sur l'action de la diplomatie du Cameroun et surtout l'engagement formel de notre pays de défendre le point de cette diplomatie qui ne sont pas négociables pour affirmer notre force en tant qu'État, en tant que pays et surtout en tant que pays qui est reconnu pour sa sagacité en matière de négociation et en matière de, 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 de faire une image de marque de l'Union du pays dans tous les domaines. Ceci étant, le docteur Gaillard a posé une série de questions auxquelles je vais essayer de, de répondre. Il a voulu connaître si le Cameroun a une structure au niveau de notre ministère, qui évalue les accords de musulmans qui procèdent éventuellement à leur révision ou alors plus simplement qui peut les dénoncer euh, comme ça se fait euh, dans certains cas. Je voudrais lui apporter une réponse rassurante dans ce domaine qu'au ministère, il y a la structure dans chaque division géographique d'évaluer les accords que nous signons avec des partenaires directs. Il y a également une direction qui évalue les accords que nous signons avec nos partenaires multilatéraux. 